Josh, you ready? Yeah. Come on. Over we go. Praise the Lord. reading uh, Psalms 27.5. Actually, I'm going to start 27.1. Psalms 27.1. Oh, yes, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. If you're there, say amen. 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 It says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, and whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host, th th though an host sh should encamp against me, my heart my heart shall not fear. Though <laughs> The, though war shall rise against me, in this will I be confident. Uh -huh. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and, uh -huh. and inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me, he shall set me upon a rock now. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies around about me. Therefore, I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yeah, and I will sing praises unto the Lord. Amen. Hear, O Lord, when I cry, when my voice have mercy also upon me, and answer me. When thou sayest, seek my face, my heart said unto me, unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not, hide not that thy face far from me put not thy servant away in anger Amen. thou hast been my help leave me not neither forsake me O God of my salvation when my father and my mother forsake me when the Lord will take me up uh -huh. teach me thy way O Lord and lead me in the plain path because of my enemies yeah. deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies for the false witness are rising against me in such as breath breathe out of cruelty and I had fainted unless I had believed yeah. to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living wait on the Lord be good of courage and he shall strengthen thy heart wait I say unto the Lord Come on. Amen. Amen. And I just want to talk about you know something came on my uh, mind today he, he was telling me he was like are you ready and I was like I thought he was talking about the camera or something. I said yeah I'm ready and uh he said, no. He said, I'm going to do some, maybe some tag team preaching. I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> and so he was like, and Cassie came in there a little bit later at the house. And she was like, uh, he wants you to pray and study. I said, okay. So I started to pray and study. And I was praying on the bed. And Come I on. said, God, what do you want me to Come preach on. about? And he said, I want, to preach, I want you to preach about trouble. Come on. And... You know, today, I want to talk about something. I had uh, was reading a news article, and the news article said mall shooting. I was like, oh, no. I said, somebody shot a mall or something. So I started reading the article, and the article said that a guy stole a pair of sunglasses. He pulled out a BB gun, and, and he was shot by one of the security guards. And I was like, okay, why did they stick the, you know, a title, mall shooting? Come on. You know, it's just a lie to get you to read the article. Right. And so last night, I went on a stream, and she knows I went on, that was the third time I went on. The first time I went on, I said, Elvis is alive. <laughs> <laughs> and I had many people coming in and stuff. They probably thought I was going to talk about Elvis, but I didn't. I talked about the Lord. Right. And so that was just to get them in there. Probably said, well, he's going to talk about, I had Darren come in, there, and other people came in. And... Uh, and I was telling him about lot about me and stuff and how he can witness the people and stuff and um, so you know but the world today is in a place where um, there's trouble yeah. and there's a lot of things going around I just read the news today there was actually a shooting 
I forgot where it was, but there was a shooting somewhere, and there was like 10 or 11 police officers shot today, yeah. this Sunday, and one was killed, and he was 29 years old, and uh, that's sad because what it was is a shooter that shot like 100 rounds into a bunch of police officers, yeah. and he was there, they said he was there protecting the other cops, so it was, something was going on, and... You know, there's a lot of trouble, and and um, the world's coming to a point where you know I'm hoping 2018 is a lot better than 2017. Well, but the way that we're going is not looking that way. Amen. And with all the shootings and stuff, the world's just in trouble. And the God just said, I want you to speak on trouble. So, um, in Psalms 27:5, it says, "Hear, O Lord, when I cry." With my voice, have mercy upon me, and he'll answer me. And uh, if we begin to answer, and um, if we begin to pray, he'll answer us. That's right. And we're in, time, we're in a time of trouble as Christians, we should be praying to God. We shouldn't yes. be going to a psychiatrist or going That's to right. somebody that, like a pastor or somebody to talk to. What you need to be doing is being on your right. knees. That's right. And we need to... Uh, just pray to the Lord for the answers that we need. Because when we're in trouble, who are we going to turn to when we have nobody else? That's right. The, only, the Lord is only there. We're going to turn to Him. So, and I want to read in Psalms 46, uh, 1. Psalms 6, 41 says, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Uh -huh. And, you know, like I was saying, God saying, hey, you know, the world's in trouble, and some of the Christians that you know, they're in trouble, but they don't know who to turn to. They want to turn to everybody else, and then, and this is what it says, God is our refuge and strength. Right. And I was reading down to, I think it was Psalms uh, 46, and, and there was actually two verses in there. It says, God is our refuge. Uh -huh. And it's telling us that God is our refuge. Let's turn to Him. And Psalms uh, 25, uh, 25, 2. 25, 2 says, Oh my God, I trust in Thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. You know, a lot of people, they're ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's and right. that's the reason why the enemies come against them. Right. And if you're not walking in the path in the will of God, you're going straight. Amen. Amen. You can be, uh, you know, I'm going to use Gavin for example. Gavin can be walking down the road or somewhere in a store, walking in a store. Hey, and here, here, and Satan be talking behind the Satan. Be like, Gavin. Look at that hot chick in front of you. Uh -huh. yep. <laughs> Just take one little look. Uh -huh. Bless one little look turns into two looks. Right. Two looks turns into three looks. Right. Three looks turns into four looks. Right. Next you know, you're off the path of God. Right. Right. Amen. And um, if Gavin ever did that, Tony found out, then you know, <laughs> you got a little trouble there. But <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but like, um, you know, I want to talk about something that you know a lot of people do know, but I struggle with pornography, and pornography is one of the worst things you can struggle with. And I struggled for years with it, and I figured, you know, my mom when they first caught me. They were like, well, they told she told my dad, well, he's just curious. And that curiosity, yeah, I was curious at first, but after a while, I started, even though I was a Christian, I started to walk off the path from the will of God. And when I got away, I was like, well, when I get married, I'll just, it'll go away, but it never did. Right. And, you know, it almost split, it almost split marriage up between me and Cassie. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not proud of it. It's something I'm not proud of. But I know my God has forgiven me when That's I ask right. for forgiveness. Yeah. That's right. And now I'm walking in the will of God. Right. And he's putting a word in my, you know, I told my dad, he was like, I, you know, I said, I don't know what, I, he's, he's, I said, Miller wants me to study. And I said, I don't know what to say. So I started praying. God gave me a message that quick. 
I was very surprised. <laughs> right. Because it takes a while sometimes, but he gave me, he said, you know, our people is in trouble, and we all pray for those who are in trouble, but those in trouble have to be willing to, you know, talk to God. And if they don't, then the enemies will triumph them. Right. And so I'm going to read in uh, John, go to John 16:33. In John uh, 16, 33, it says, These things I have spoken unto, this is Jesus talking, yes. right? that in me ye might have peace. Yes. The Bible didn't, doesn't say, he didn't say, you will have peace, not guaranteed. He said you might have peace. Right. Yeah. And because some people will speak to Jesus and they'll say, Lord, help me, I'm in trouble. The enemies are coming against me. But nothing happens. Why? Because like Austin has been said before, we need to learn to pray, actually pray about right. what we're praying about. And if we actually get on our knees and actually pray about things, God will show us peace. Jesus Jesus will come and He'll give us peace. Right. That's right. That's right. And it all says, In the world ye shall have tribulation. Yes. It doesn't say might have tribulation. It says, ye shall have tribulation. Why? Because you are in the world. Right. When you're in the world, you're going to have tribulation, trials, just like I use Gavin as an example. A Christian comes along, they think they're walking right with God, and all of a sudden, Satan comes along and says, hey, just one thing. Do just one thing. And what he does, they follow Satan, they walk off to the path because they're not strong enough to stand right, right. In, the, in the will of God. So they walk up to the path, and Satan has them. That's right. And sometimes it's very hard to get back. I've been there. I've been there plenty of times. And sometimes it's very hard to get back. That's but right. with God's grace and mercy, He brought me back. Amen. And He could bring you back. Right. Anybody out there on live stream that's having problems with tribulation trials, just call to God. He'll be there for you. That's right. That's right. And. You know, like it says, in the world, I'm going to read again, in the world ye shall have tribulation. So if you're walking in the world, you're going to have trials and tribulations and such and all kinds of other things right? that you don't want. But it says, but be of good cheer. I have overcome, overcome the world. And so when we come against, uh, come, uh, come towards God and Jesus, we... Uh, he, he helps us overcome the worldly things. That's right. That's right. That's right. And so, I guess that's all, that's all I have. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. You ready? Brother Austin. Your brother Austin. The Lord didn't really give me a message. He just told me to... Uh, I'll say a few things. And uh, the thing that really came to my mind was uh, one night I got sick with the stomach bug and I was vomiting my guts up all day. And that oh. night I had a uh, good friend of mine that I normally hang out with a lot. He messaged me and he said, uh, Man, I got something really bad going on. There's uh, my girlfriend, she's fixing to have surgery and she's talking like she's not uh, going to make it out. And uh, I told him, I said, the only thing I can tell you to do is to pray. And he said, well, I don't know how. I said, have you ever been saved? He said, no. And I said, well, here's what I'll do. Give me a few minutes. Let me try to get my voice, and I'm going to call you. And when I called him, I got to talk to him for a few minutes. And he asked my mom, I was on the couch, and it was a few minutes. My voice was still raspy, and I could barely get it out. But I was talking to him. I was telling him, I was like, God is our salvation. And he is our way of life. Right. And he told me, he said, yeah. He said, how do I get saved? And I said, I asked him one thing. I said, do you believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for you? He right. said, yeah. Right. I said, do you believe that you can be saved through his blood? He said, yeah. 
So we prayed, and I felt the Holy Ghost come down, and we was talking. And after that, I got talking to him, and then he went, and he went to bed, and he called me the next day. He said, she's fine. And I said, well, praise the Lord. I said, did you pray for her? He said, yeah. He said, I prayed for her, and I prayed for her. He said, last night when I got off the phone, when I went and talked to my parents, <coughs> which see, he's bedridden, so for him to talk to them, they have to come in there to him. And when she come in there to him, she didn't believe that he was saved, but she didn't think that God could do something so drastically overnight. And uh, he went from cussing and drinking and all that to stopping, and now he's serving the Lord. To this day, he still messages me every day. And he's still saying, Come on. And you know, Christmas Day, I was over at uh, my girlfriend's house and he messaged me and he said, Hey, what are you doing? I said, I'm over here for Christmas. And he said, Well, Merry Christmas and God bless. I said, God bless you too. I said, Keep praying. Keep praying for her. She'll get better. And as he keeps messaging me this stuff, you know, it really fills me with joy because to let me know that, you know, we're miles and miles and miles apart, but a simple microphone and play the video game with him could you know, lead to all of this. And, you know, it's a true blessing to know that, you know, all the things that I've done, you know, praying and reading the Word, all I playing video games with them, you know, it really ministered to him. And, you know, it's uh -huh. not just him, you know. When I was getting ready for a message that just happened uh, last, uh, I think it was month, uh, when I preached the youth service, you know, I had a bad thing happen. You know, I had a... Had a friendship breakup. I told him, I said, if you're not going to stop this and stop this, I can't hang out anymore. Because right. I don't solicit doing drugs. Right. I don't solicit drinking right. and cussing. And, you know, he told me, he said, man, you ain't going to make me make this decision, are you? I said, yeah. I said, i got to make the decision to serve That's my right. God over That's hanging right. out with you. And you know what? It wasn't even a week later I got a phone call. He said, I'm sorry, and I've stopped. That's he right. said, I haven't done nothing for a week. And he said, I'm stopping for good. And you know what? I've got to minister to him too. And you know, he's been through a lot in his life. You know, he's been to middle hospitals over stuff because people have gave up on him. His own family has given up on him. But you know what? Uh -huh. His sister didn't give up on him. Yeah. You know, the church is up there and they haven't given up on him. Uh -huh. They keep praying for him. And you know what? I keep praying for him because I know that God's going to do a mighty work for right. his life. So he can move around. He didn't believe that God could do anything. But you know what? He's got seeing God through. My other friend that got saved, and you know what? <clears throat> There's another friend to hang out with that I know God's doing the work in his life too because he lives over in Scotland and he don't believe in God. But you know what? One night he got talking to me about it, God, and he said, I want you to try to prove to me God's real. And I said, Look outside. Look at the trees that are around you. Look at the people that are around you. I said, Do you believe that a simple bag in the universe could create something like that? You know, something I really saw that really shocked me was he told me that as soon as we stopped talking that night, he went and was hanging out with some of his friends, and they was talking about the Bible. And they was atheists too. And they was talking about the Bible and the things that was in the Bible. And they was wondering how could one man go on a cross and die and not say a word. And not curse them and not tell them that they were going to hell and all that. And I told them, I said the way he did it was because he had love. And the Bible tells us that he was led like a lamb to the slaughter. Right. He kept his mouth shut because he knew that he was doing God's will. Right. And he knew that no matter what he did on earth, that it was all going to pay off when he come back from that cloud of glory. That's right. And you know, to go along with what Josh said, something that really has uh, come to my mind a lot recently is God gave me two words. It was pre-owned Christians. And I was wondering, God, what's a pre-owned Christian? And you know what? He let me know tonight. Over there, he said, I want you to say this. A pre-owned Christian is somebody that used to serve me. Right. But now they chose to go out and do the world of things. Right. And now they need to come back and get a renewing. Right. And, you know, I got wondering, how could you be a pre-owned Christian and then come back and get renewed? And then I got believing and thinking that cross is the reason we can get renewed. That's His blood right. that he shed on it is the reason we can be renewed. And, you know, Amen. It's really hard for people to believe that we're not in flesh when we get speaking in tongues and get yep. <coughs> slain in the spirit, but it's not in flesh. Because if it was in flesh, then 
the religion would have died out a long, long time. Ago. Right, come on. Because it's in spirit that we do all of this. That's right. And one more thing that really came to my mind is uh, one day when we was in Bowling Green, we just took the boys to uh, the psychiatrist. Come on. And while I was in there, I was reading my Bible on my phone and I got thinking, people get paid so much to come here and tell this man what's wrong with them and what they need to change in their life, but they go home and they don't do a thing about it. That's right. They go back to them the next month and they come up with a new excuse. They come up and they say, well, now this is wrong with me too. And now this is wrong with me. And you know what? I'd love to open my mouth a lot of times and say some stuff, but God tells me, he says, shh. Yeah. Hold your peace. <laughs> and there's many times I I love to argue and say, "But well, Lord, they need to know." Mm -hmm. But you know what? One thing that really gets me about the psychiatrist is they'll sit down and try to talk about your problems. Right. But all they're really doing is just sitting there waiting and counting the money that they're getting from you. Uh -huh. And the thing that really don't I don't understand about it is the same thing that you're sitting there doing at that office. You could be sitting at home doing. Asking God, you know, you can tell him your problems and he can take them away. That's right. All that the psychiatrist is going to do is going to give you medicine saying that this is going to cure it. Yeah. But I can tell you right now, it ain't going to cure it. That's right. God will put it on you until you serve him. You're stuck with it until you do serve him. That's right. And you know, another thing that really... Mm, Help him Jesus. Bless him, Lord. Come on. Oh, no. All right, the Lord just let me... No, I need to tell you this. Another thing that happened before I preached the youth service was I got broken down one night. Uh -huh. I was crying for hours and hours one night. I didn't get to go to sleep till 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning because of church hurt that had happened when I went and did a simple visit to a different church and they sparked trouble up. Yep. And you know, I got home that night, and it really hurt me because, you know, it really made me feel like I wasn't worthy to preach His Word, and that I should have just gave it up and quit that night. Uh, and you know what Miller said this morning about how he can't believe preachers could just lay the Bible down? You know, that really got to me because I was at that point to where I was ready to lay it down. But then when I got down, to just like Josh just said, when I got down and prayed is when I got my peace for it. You know, after hours and hours of being broken down, you know, I got down and prayed, and that's when I got the release from it. And, you know, that's when, when I got here, getting ready for preaching that night, when I was praying, I was praying here, I only think I sat down a total of five minutes. Right. And I was walking up and down the aisles, I was almost in a full-blown sprint, praying because I was so happy because... I knew that God had something in store that night. And you know, right. that night when it happened, I was so happy. Hey, you know, man. Bless you, Lord. When I got done, I was so happy. I was praying. I was praising God. When I got home, bless I went to my room and I laid on the bed and I said, Thank you, Lord. For you hey, let me know that I was worth something. All right. You let me know that your spirit didn't go away from me. And you know, man. you let me know that uh, I did have something inside uh, of me that not everybody right. has. And, you know, uh, it truly let me know that no matter bless what, you, Jesus. God is always there. somebody out live stream right now that's ready to quit being a Christian because something's happened to them. Lord. And I'm here to tell you, don't do it. That's right. Stay in church. Find that's you right. a good church. That's if right. you can't do nothing else, make your trip down here and find you a place on the altar. You know, you can make an altar anywhere and you don't have to be in a church house. Right. But you know, it does help when you're in a church house that's when you're right. with other faith believing Christians because they can help you pray through and they can help you. <laughs> and you know, I really thank God for giving me a church like this because you know, I knew I was called to preach. I believe it was at the age of 10 or 11, and I ran from it for a long time. Right. And you're like, well, how do you run from it at such a young age? Because I didn't want to do it. I had a shyness about me, a bashfulness. I didn't want to do it. I was like, Lord, please take it away. You know, uh -huh. give it to somebody else. And you know, it really let me know this year that I had to do it because. Something I promised God. I said, if you save my uncle, uh -huh. I'll no matter what. Uh -huh. And you know what? We went to church one night, and he saved my uncle. Now he didn't save my uncle, and now my uncle was back up there preaching the word again. Uh -huh. And you know, when we was there that night, he announced that he was preaching again. 
it filled my heart with joy. And it was it, something I had been praying for for years and years. It finally right. paid off. And you know, that was a blessing That's to right. me. It might not have been a blessing to anybody else in that church house, but it was a blessing to this boy. Yeah. Amen. That's right. I believe that's all I got to say. Amen. Amen. Yeah, he texted me, Brother Warren. He said, I don't know. I said, you get it. God's going to give you something. You just hold on. I said, don't let the devil, don't let the devil destroy you. God's got something in store right, for right. you. Hallelujah. Brother Warren. Praise God. Let's get Brother Warren to be in hand. Hallelujah. Folks, I appreciate the hand, but you're looking at somebody that doesn't deserve it. Amen. But you're just one that does. That's right. Jesus is the one that deserves the hand. Amen. And nobody else. Amen. And the Bible talks about giving him a clap offering. Uh huh. And so you can do that by yourself at home. Uh huh. You're worshiping the Lord and praying by yourself. Just begin to give him a clap offering. That's right. And start and, and think of a reason why you're doing it. Yeah. Your salvation. That's right. Just begin to clap for him for that and give him a clap offering. And all of a sudden you'll find. Other things starts coming to your mind. And say all of a sudden, hey, I could be here for hours. Uh huh. Come on. Because of all that He's done for me right. and right. for you, praise God. You're here tonight because God's kept you. That's right. You're reaching the end of a new year yeah. because God has kept you through this year. Oh yes. Yeah. Praise Hello. God. And we owe it all to Him. Folks. Amen. Yeah. That's right. We owe everything to Him. Yeah. And we're getting ready to start a new year in just a few hours. Now, you may not have thought about this, but this time of year, right now, where we're at, this night, is the night that people in America and even around the world have hope that they hadn't felt up until this night. That's right. Why? Because we're getting ready to start a new year. New year. And for the most part, people that's in the world even, they have hope tonight will change over into a new year uh -huh. and that next year will be greater uh -huh. and better than this year. They hope for that. Yeah. Right. But I want to tell you something. What what usually happens is in about four to six weeks after the year passes, that hope begins to dwindle uh -huh. and it goes back to normal. Back to normal. Because they're looking at everything from a worldly standpoint. Right. But if your hope tonight is in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Hallelujah. and His Word, then you can keep on hoping, folks. That's right. You can keep on believing. You can Amen. keep on trusting Him, and He won't let you down. That's right. There's a scripture I want to read to you tonight found in Isaiah, the 43rd chapter. It's a great scripture. It's a script for me it is because it means so much to me because of something God did uh, for me through this scripture several years ago. Praise God. It's found in Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, in verse 18 and 19. <coughs> so remember ye not the former things, uh -huh. neither consider the things of old. We're coming into a new year, folks, and God would say to us tonight, let the world do all that they do to try to, to experience this coming into a new year, but here's what I want you to do. This is what I want my people to do. The year is ending. Uh, tonight we're getting ready to start an oven in a few hours. Right. God says this is the time that I need. I want you to come and recommit your life, rededicate your life to me, and say, Lord, I give you my life. You know, there's a lot of people that uh, uh, say that, uh, Brother David, but they uh, 
their life shows different. That's right. Amen. That's right. And, there, and it's a lot of, you can sit down, you don't have to keep saying it. But if you just want to, praise God. But if you want to say it for the reading of the word, I understand. It says, Remember you not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Look at verse 19. Behold, I will do a new thing. Right. Now, some of you need for God to let God do a new thing in your life tonight. That's right. Yes. Some of you in a place that life is just not where you wish it was. Well, the only one that can change it for the good is God. That's right. And behold, I will do a new thing. It shall spring forth. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I don't know where you're at tonight in your life. I don't know if you're facing something that looks impossible. Come on. Yes. I've been there several times, I'm sorry to say. Come on, Brother Warren. Come on. My son Josh was born. And the doctor comes in the room where my wife and I are and says, I've got bad news and I've got good news. Uh-huh. He said, what do you want first? I said, what's the bad? He said, your son has been born with the worst heart condition a child can have when he's born. Uh-huh. That's the bad news. I said, well, what's the good news? I don't know. <laughs> he said, we have an operation we've been doing for 15 years for for babies like this that are born like this and we've never lost a child Amen. and we're, we'll do that surgery on him and and and, and from then from then on you'll just have to that's a progression of things and josh has been through it he knows yes. he's 37 years old now and he's been through a lot of about five different surgeries in the last two right. years for his heart right but god has still kept him praise god yeah, that's right. i want to tell you there's nothing impossible with god that's yeah. right that's what god's word says Remember, when he, when the angel spoke to Mary and said, you're going to have a child, and you know all the whole story, and she said, how can that be? Uh -huh. And he said, just remember, Mary, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. That's right. There's nothing too hard for God. Right. Jeremiah 32, 17, God asked the question, is there anything too hard for me? Uh -huh. And several verses on, on past that, he comes out and says, there is nothing too hard for me. That's right. And so what he's asking of you and me tonight, is there anything too, there's nothing you're facing, Missy, that God is not an answer That's to. That's right. Amen. You look to him. Don't look to the Don't look to him for all the good stuff that we we'll kept you this way or that way. Just turn to Him. That's so right. there's going to come a day when you have nobody to turn to but Him. Right. You can fight it. You can join it. You'll see. God will see you through. Right. God will help you. This, is just, this can be the night of a new beginning for you. Absolutely. You can say, tomorrow, my New Year's resolution is not to lose weight. Right? Now tomorrow there's going to be a lot of people. Yes. It starts out with a resolution. Yeah. Number one resolution in America. What is it? Losing, losing, losing weight. weight. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I'm going to lose 50 pounds. I'm going to lose 100 pounds. Uh -huh. The next, uh, uh, the the next resolution I think that is the uh, uh, second. Uh, the number one one is losing weight, uh -huh. and the second one, I think, is uh, uh, starting to eat better. Uh -huh. I'm going to start eating better. I'm going to eat healthier. You ever thought about doing that? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> going to eat healthier. Yeah. So that lasts a little while. And then another, the next one is, I'm going to start exercising. Get myself in shape. Yeah. You know, right now, this time of year is the most popular time of the year for gyms and, and places like Josh and I was part of up here. Yeah. Uh, we, I, I, I went in there, I used it once, never went back. <laughs> <laughs> and I had every intention of going with Joshua. Yeah. And so, you know, we say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, lose weight. I, I mean, I'm going to lose weight, I'm going to eat better, and I'm going to uh, exercise, and I'm going to run, I'm going to walk, and all this stuff. All that last, they say, the, the statistics say, by Groundhog's Day, it's gone. That's right. Yeah. For the majority of people. What day is that? February 2nd. February 2nd. <laughs> if not, but then, they say the next day is by Valentine's Day, You're right. the 14th of February, those resolutions are gone. Folks, those resolutions will not do you any good when it comes to spiritual things. That's right. That's right. They're all fixed.
physical. Yeah. Right. They're all for this life. Right. But right. right. oh, praise God. What if we said, I'm not going to worry about this life. I'm going to trust God and keep me as long as He wants me. Yeah. You're looking at somebody tonight that's not leaving this world until God says it's time. I don't care what my flesh says. I don't care anything about what's wrong with me. God says, uh -huh. if you serve me and you're in my will, uh -huh. you won't leave here. That's right. Because it's my time to bring you yeah. home. That's right. And I know that. Amen. So I don't worry about it anymore. But oh, the Lord wants us to, I believe, think about this tonight. Instead of a resolution uh -huh. that deals with your physical, what about a resolution that deals with you spiritually? That's right. Come on. If you, if you read 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8, and just look at what the verse says. It says, Bodily exercise profiteth little. That's right. Is of little effect. That's right. But then he goes on to say, But godliness, godliness. Right. is of great gain. That's oh, yeah. right. And what is the godliness? It's, if you look the word up, it means to live a holy life, a godly life. life. It means to live a, a scriptural life. That's right. If you're not doing that, you think God doesn't know that? Come on. Come on. You think He doesn't know everything about us? Come on, brother. There's game players out here. Amen. I know people right now for us to be Christian, but I can just in my spirit, I said, they're not saved. That's right. You say, well, that's judging. Stop judging. Uh -huh. I get so tired of people saying, don't judge this or that. When Jesus Himself said, make a righteous judgment. Amen. Come on. Yes, he did. Come on. And a righteous judgment is one where you know the facts and one based on the Word of God. That's right. That's right. And Amen. we have the right to do that. That's and right. God's Word says, but when you meet somebody, if they're saved, their spirit will identify with your spirit. That's right. That's right. child of God. Amen. That's right. I meet a lot of people that say they're Christians. That's right. Come on. But in my spirit, it doesn't identify. That's right. A man here in Glasgow, Kentucky, I won't tell you his name. He's gone on now to be with the Lord, thank God. But I used to be around him. He worked on my car. He was a mechanic that took care of my car. And every time I needed something done, I called him. He'd get me right in. Because he said, Brother Warren, I want to keep you on the road. I know you're doing God's work. Right. And that was just a favor of God. That's all it was. Right. Give me a favor. Come on. And about four or five times. Come on. I asked him, David. I said, are you saved? Yeah. Really saved? Do you know you are? Oh, yes. They said, I know I'm saved. I know I'm on my way to heaven. Yeah. I ask you tonight. Come on, brother. This coming. And it's coming. Yeah. yeah. It's coming quick. That's right. Maybe quicker than you think. Why is it quick? Because the Bible tells us our life is like a vapor. Yeah. One moment's here, next moment's gone. That's right. I don't know if you know that I work at a Christian radio station called WJCR. Every night, Monday through Friday, we have what's called prayer line. Anybody ever heard of it? Uh -huh. Okay. We pray over people that's called in or written us letters called in. We pray over their needs. And every night, we'll have three, four, or five that will say, pray for a family that just lost a loved one. Uh -huh. Okay. The week before Christmas, on a Wednesday night, Come on, brother. Yeah, but we've never seen it before, David. We got 17 calls that of people who had just lost loved ones. Uh -huh. 17. 17. We never had that many. And the whole time I've been there, we've never had 17. That's a lot of death. And it's a lot of families that were hurting at Christmas time. That's right. A young lady in her early 30s uh, was a mother of some small children, went out of this world, and they weren't expecting it. From young to old, they That's go. That's right. I ask you tonight, death's going to come one of these days. Amen. It's going to come knocking on your door. And when it's time, you're not going to keep that door closed. That's, That's right. right. It's going to come. That's right, Brother Warren. Amen. You may leave here tonight and never make it home. That's right. That's possible. That's possible. I don't want it to be, and I hope it's not the case. And I believe for most of us, Lord willing, we're going to be all right for a while. Come on. 
But if death should come, are you ready? And a lot of you, probably everybody here say yes. But you let it come. You let it come. And you start looking death right in the face. And all of a sudden, there's a great fear. Right. Oh, there's a fear. That man I was telling you about, he thought I forgot, I wasn't going to finish my story. That man, if I named him, many of you would know who he is. You know, don't you? And I asked him four or five times over the years of knowing him. <coughs> I knew him six or seven years before he passed away. Uh -huh. And I, I, I just felt led. I said, are you, you sure you're ready to meet God? Oh, yes, brother. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure. But in my spirit, it didn't identify with me that he was. That's right. And I knew in my heart he wasn't. Because yeah, right. God had just put in there, he's not saved. So I just I prayed and prayed. And, and then one day, Something happens and he gets a pain that he hadn't had. Uh -huh. And it stays a while. Then he goes to the doctor, and the doctor, after all the tests, I'm sorry to tell you, you have cancer. Uh -huh. And you have a very short time to live, maybe less than six months. Well, if you think if you if you think you want to play games now, you let somebody tell you you got six months or less, and see how quick you start getting serious with God. That's right. Come on. That's right. Come on. You stop playing games. That's right. I'm not a game player, and God's not a game player. That's right. He don't play games. That's right. It's a very serious thing. You're going to be somewhere and there's not but two places, folks. That's, That's right. right. Amen. Come on. Bless you. After they diagnosed him with his cancer, we had a Bible study in his home every Sunday night. Uh-huh. We'd been doing it for quite a while. And we had one one night after he got his diagnosis. Everybody left. His wife went into the kitchen, I think, to fix some drinks or something. I don't know what she was doing. And he said, Brother Warren, I said, yes, I called him by name. He said, I don't know that I'm ready. That's right. He said, I don't have no assurance that I'm saved. You see, it took death for looking it in the face to get his attention. That's right. Thank God that he didn't die quick where he didn't have a chance. That's right. And I said, do you... Do you want to get right with God? He said, yes, I do. And tears are coming to his eyes. Now, here's a man. A guy that's raced cars. He's, he's had a rough life. He's been a man, what the world would call a man. I want to tell you something. It don't take a man to go out in this world and live the way people live. It takes a man to follow Jesus Christ. But that's not the way the world's going. When you follow him, you're going to get the But you stay in there. You, they will say, Oh, why didn't I listen to him? Why didn't I look at his life? Why didn't I give my heart to the Lord? It'll be too late, but it won't be for you because you'll be there behind Christ and the God with that great white robe. Of, That's right. Eternity's your home oh, with the Lord. I said, Do you want to pray and ask the Lord to save you? He said, Yes, I do. We bowed our heads and we prayed. And he asked Christ to come into his heart and life. As soon as he raised his head, I seen it. Amen. I looked right at him. I said, you got it, didn't you? He said, yes, I did. I know now I'm ready. Amen. A month later, he died. Yes, he did. Wow. And when he went to be with the Lord, I was in the room with him, with his wife. And it was so peaceful. Just one little short breath and another one. And another one. And it was over. That's right. So peaceful. When my wife went to be with the Lord in uh, uh, December 1st of 2003. I'm sorry for taking so long, David. Oh, that's all right. Thank God. God. Uh, I was sitting with her on the side of the bed. And she, it was a quarter after seven in the morning on a Monday morning. 
she was getting would have get be getting ready to go to dialysis, but she she died at a quarter after seven. I didn't know what had happened then, but I knew I did later. She took four short breaths like that and was gone. In a matter of a minute to two minutes, she was back. And I thought, what has happened here? Did she just pace out or what? And she asked me, she said, I paced out. I said, yeah, I think you did. I really didn't know what was happening. And <clears throat> exactly 7.30 that morning, she did the same thing, four short breaths, and she was gone. But this time, when I looked at her, sitting on the side of the bed with her, when I looked at her, her face lit up like a light bulb. It just glowed. Whiteness just coming. Glowed. And I said, she's with Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She's with the Lord. Uh, ain't nobody else. Oh, she was the dream of my life. I can tell you this tonight. She was a scriptural wife. Now, you won't like me saying this, ladies. But you could you you need to be a scriptural wife. That's right. If you want to find you know my wife did, she got into scriptures and she searched the scriptures as to what a, a Christian wife and a scriptural wife was to be, and she tried hard. And she never came to me and said, "You need to be a spiritual husband." I mean, a scriptural husband. She worked hard on her part, and she prayed that God would work on me about my part, uh, and He did. Yeah. But you need to be a scriptural wife. And then we need to be scriptural husbands. Uh -huh. But when she passed away that day, and she glowed like a light was lit up, and I knew she's with the Lord. Right now, folks, for no amount of money, if God said, I'll give you all the money the world has, and a hundred years to spend it, if you bring her back, I said, I wouldn't bring her back for nothing. That's right. She's out of here. And I'm going home one of these days. Yes. And we all are. Blessing, Lord. And I personally believe this, folks. This is my personal belief. You know the chapter of John 14 where Jesus said, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. Where, where I am there, you may be also. Yeah. In my Father's house are many mansions. When I saw and told you to go to prepare a place for you. If I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. Let me show you something about that scripture. You know what most people believe that refers to? What? The rapture. Uh -huh. No, I don't know that at all. Let me show you why. And I can, can include the rapture, but this, but I can show you why in that scripture. You want me to show you how it's not the rapture, but it's an individual thing? Let me show you. You want to know? Okay, turn to John 14 chapter. I'll end this with this. Lord willing, John 14 chapter. I'm not saying it can't include the rapture, but listen, he wasn't talking about the rapture there. I'm going to show you. I'm going to prove it to you from the Word. That he wasn't, he wasn't talking about the rapture. I'm going to show it to you. If you've got a King James Bible, if you don't, shame on you. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Did you know 20, 20 of the new versions of the Scriptures have removed over 2,000 verses from the King James? Amen. That's right. If you ain't got a King James, you ain't got a Bible. That's right. you got part of a Bible. That's right. But you ain't got the whole thing. That's right. But if you, if you, reason I, well, I, I didn't want to get off on this and like, but well, you got a King James. Just stick with it. Keep it. You say, I can't understand it. Well, if you, are you saved? Do you have the Holy Spirit inside of you? Then ask the Lord to help you, and He'll help you. Amen. He'll reveal it to you. Nobody had, I, I, you know, you know, when I was in high school, you know what my, my worst subject was? English. English. People said, well, I've had people say, well, we can tell when you talk, Brother Warren, English wasn't your favorite subject. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my wife, when I first met her, her mom used to, you knew a family from Eastern Kentucky. And how many know Eastern Kentucky we talk a little different than we do? But let's just tell the truth. <laughs> they got a little bit of mountain talk yeah. accent. Well, they used to keep a little girl, and she was just precious. But boy, she was, she was a, uh, she was active. Woo, she was active. And she was about eight or nine. And I come in after, uh, when I first met my wife, and come in to, uh, have I had it off? Yeah. Well, praise God. Do I need to have it off? Okay. Is that too loud? No, you're good. Okay, okay. Well, well, anyway, I went in the house, and this little girl heard me talk. She said, she said, Grandma, she called uh, my wife. She said, he talks just like we do. 
<laughs> in the mountains. Yeah. Well, if you're, are you there yes. in the uh, 14th chapter? Amen. Okay, let me show you something. You, you might have seen it, you might not have, but I will show you. You ready? Chapter 1, I mean chapter, uh, verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Mm -hmm. Okay, you there? Yeah. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, I am a If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a, prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Now I want you to see two words. You and ye. See those words? Yes. You see them? Mm -hmm. Verse 3. And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. You see those two words? Mm -hmm. Ye always, for the most part, refers to plural, more than one person. Okay, you, you see that? Mm -hmm. Ye. You always refers to an individual. Yeah. An individual, one person. Now look at what it says. And just picture it as one person he's speaking. Now he's saying this to those who are his followers. He's going to come. I will go and prepare a place for you and will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. I will receive what? You. 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 Individually. You see, there's no angels coming after war and trailer. The Son of God's coming after war and trailer. Now you know if you most of us we hear songs about angels coming on said, you can have an angel come and get you. But no, I'm not I, I, Lord knows I don't want no angel come get me. I want Jesus come get me. All right. And he said, I will come and receive you unto myself individually. That's the death of a person laying you up. Laying on the bed. They were Christian. Well, there's a big difference in a Christian, non Christian's death. But this person was laying there. And they were saved. And all of a sudden, they looked up. And a big smile broke on their face. They got a smile. And they went like this. Like this. And their heads fell. What do you think happened? There wasn't no angel coming again. And that was Jesus. That's right. Come and tuck that person home. And he's coming for me. Praise God. He's coming for you if you're saved. You don't have to worry about death. You know what? If you're saved tonight, death should be for the state from That's your right. Mind. Worry. If you're worried about it, something's wrong in here. Get it right. right. You don't have to worry about dying. Listen, there's a man in our church up where we go that's got some real bad physical problems, and he's concerned that he could go out of here pretty soon. But he knows the Lord, and he's saved. And I don't believe he's going to, but uh, but whatever happens, God's will be done. But I told him, I said, when it comes time for you to go, here's what's going to happen. Jesus is going to come to you. Now, I, 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 like, I like the thought of that. Yes. I like the thought that the one's coming after me is Jesus. I said, Jesus is going to come. He's going to look at you and he's going to say, Son, it's time to come. That's right. And he's going to reach down and take you. Well, praise God. They just took the sting of death out for me. Amen. There's no sting of death there. How can you re How can you not look forward to it? He got a big smile on his face. He said, Man, that makes you almost want to go home. Jesus will come and get you when it's time. But yes, he will. If you're in God's will, it won't happen until it is time. That's right. And tonight, I encourage you to make resolutions that will help you spiritually, not physically. That's Don't right. Don't worry about the physical. That's right. God will take care of that. Worry, be concerned about, not worry, but concerned about your spiritual condition. How much time are you spending in the Word? Increase it. That's right. Make a resolution. You know what my resolution every year is? Every year, same thing for years. I increase my reading in the Word of God by a chapter every year. Every year I add another chapter. This year I felt like the Lord said, Now I want you this I want I want you to give me the resolution this year, the decision. To get along with me, spend time with me. And I do spend time with the Lord in prayer, but he, he said, I want you to come and just spend time worshiping me. That's right. Just worshiping Him. Oh, I love that, folks. I don't know if you've ever done that, but just get along with God and just raise your hands and say, Lord, I 
I just worship you. I worship you. And all of a sudden, his presence will come into your room. He said, Where he inhabits what? The praises of his people. God bless you, David. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Yes, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, a preacher don't mean to talk long, but it's a talk. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Brother Gavin. Gavin. We're going about 11 o'clock. We're going to change order service. We're going to be doing the communion. We put it for us. Praise God. How many prayers will be in the house of God now? Wasn't really expecting to be up here, uh, but man, I guess now it's just as good as time to end, right? Uh, I'm going to read along. I'm going to go to uh, Luke chapter 4. Starting in the first verse. Everybody's very saying it. Unfortunately, I have the new King James version. I don't have a King James of my own yet. I'm working on it. Um, so, I don't think it's too much off track. Thank you. Verse, chapter 4, verse 1 says, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. Yeah. And when they, were in, when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it may be, it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed yes. unto him yes. all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Yes. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will give it. If if thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, yes. Get thee behind me, Amen. Satan, for it is written, Amen. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, Praise and God. God only shalt thou serve. Praise God. And he brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, yes. and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from yes. hence. Yes. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said that thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Amen. Amen. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. Yes. And Jesus returned into the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. Amen. Praise God. You know, there have been several times, just like Austin said, that uh, you just, personally, I, I feel unworthy. Feel unworthy to be called by God, unworthy to be a preacher, unworthy to... Uh, be a Christian sometimes. And that's the devil we're trying to get in our head and yeah. tell us and convince us yeah. that we're not good enough, that that's we're right. not worthy, that we're not deserving. Right. Well, the fact of the matter is everything that we deserve, Jesus buried it all on the cross. He took the punishment that we deserved. So now through Him, we can repent and be saved. Amen. And get baptized. Praise God. And be the Christians that we need to be through Him. Just because you get saved don't mean you're not ever going to be tempted. That's, That's not right. the case. The Bible tells us that we're going to be tempted. That's right. Devil tempted Jesus 
So what makes anybody think that we can't be tempted by right. God about that? Well, sure. That's right. No. <laughs> there's, there, like I said, there's been several times I've felt unworthy. And when I get to feeling like that, you know what I have found that the best thing to do is in that time? I get down on my knees. Pray. That's right. And I cry out to God. Yeah. I pray to God. And I don't get up until I feel God's presence. I don't get up until I feel God has answered my prayer. That's right. That's what a lot of Christians, people that say they're Christians, need to do. That's right. You know, I ran into several people out here that I work with and just different people. They say they're Christians. Uh -huh. But just like Brother Miller preaches about it all the time, and other people that I've heard, a lot of people can play the part real good. They uh -huh. play church. They right. play Christian. Yep. You can't play Christian and get in heaven. It don't That's work right. like that. Like Brother Miller talked uh, uh, talks about it all the time. You're either in or you're out. Right. You can't straddle the fence. You've got to be all in or all out. Me, I choose to give 110 percent being in. Come on. <clears throat> there's some people. There's, there's a guy I work for. James knows him. His name's Dalton to Spain. Uh, no, he. I I, I talked to him. And, you know, I just felt, there was one day I went up there and talked to him at work. And, uh, here probably about a month ago, actually. Uh, me and this other, other woman works up there. She, she's Christian. She's, uh, she don't play the part. She, she's true Christian. And, love her death, do anything for her. But, uh, me and her were talking that day, and, you know, things were starting to get heavy. Well, through all the craziness, me and this girl, she, we all, we kept a smile on her face all day long because we were talking that through the chaos, we found peace because we were talking about Jesus. Right. right. Yes. And the boy came up to us and uh, he said, why, why are you like that? I'm like, what are you talking about? He said, why are y'all so happy all the time? I'm like, dude, why shouldn't we be happy all the time? He's like, what are you talking about? I said, well, I've got a wife and kids that I love and that loves me. I've got a family that supports me in everything that I do. I've got the greatest support system in the world. I said, above all, last but certainly not least, I've got a Savior that loves me and dies for me. That's right. I said, you know, I'm happy all the time because I know that when I die or He comes back, I'm going to heaven. I'm not going to be tormented all the time. I'm not going to be tortured all the time. Come on. It's going to be peaceful. It's going to be joyful. I'm going to be shouting praises to Him all day long. Amen. Amen. Right. Well, I say all day long, but time... Is of no essence to, to God. So, you know, for all eternity, put it that way. Yes. For all eternity, yes. I'm going to be shouting and praising and worshiping God. And, you know, we need to do that down here a lot more. Yes, right. We need to give it our all while we're still here. We don't need, right. you know, like they've been talking about, we're not promised tomorrow. You know, we need to do it now while we still have time here. We need to show everybody else and do it in front of everybody else so we can bring as many people as possible with us. Amen. Take as many people as possible with us. Amen. You can't go through life alone. You can't do it. You know, I was talking to my daughter earlier. The oldest one. And, you know, she some things are going on and she was getting aggravated. So I told her, I'm like, look, you know, me and mom's not perfect, nobody's perfect. But I said, the thing about it is, you cannot go through life looking at things negatively and getting irritated and agitated over every little, single, small thing. You know, the Bible says, 
I think in Ephesians chapter 4, I'm not sure what, what verse, but it says, Be ye angry and sin not. Right. You know, I heard a preacher one time. He was he was preaching out of Ephesians, out of, out of that same scripture. He was preaching out of the same scripture. And he came across that verse, Be ye angry and sin not. Well, that whole entire service, what was he doing? He was preaching, you're not ever allowed to get angry. It don't matter what it is. You're not allowed to be angry. You can't get angry ever. It's a sin to be angry. It's a sin. It, 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 you get angry, you're sinning. That's not the case. You just read in the Bible, and the Bible tells me, be ye angry, but sin not. You know, <clears throat> I personally have, have had a long hard road with my temper in the past. I've had a hard time with my anger in the past. My wife has seen a little bit of it you know, before we got together three years ago, three and a half years ago. And, you know, people say that it runs in the family. This runs in the family, that runs in the family, that and that and this and that. It all runs in the family. That ain't the case. Just like with drugs, just like with alcohol, just like with Jesus, we make a choice. Come on. There's a wrong choice and there's a right choice. And, you know, we can, us as preachers, we can stand up here all day long and try to preach to you about the right choice. We can stand up here and try to teach you and preach to you, you know, the difference between the choices. You know, what's right and wrong. But when it comes right down to it, we can't make the choice for you. That's right. Nobody in this whole entire world can make the choice but you. Amen. That's right. Amen. You choose to get angry. You choose to give in to the devil's temptations trying to get your temper up and get angry. Now, there's probably just about every day the devil tries to tempt me. And I'll tell you this, it also tells you in the Bible, if you're right with God and where you need to be, if you've got the Holy Spirit inside of you, let me tell you something. It also tells you in the Bible, you want, I don't know, I can't remember where it's at off the top of my head right now, but I know it's in there. The Bible says that if you're right with God and you've got the Holy Spirit, it will tell you what's of God. You will know what is of God and what's not. Right? What's of the devil, what's of God. Right? You know, just like Josh used me for an example earlier. You know, say I'm walking through Walmart. And hear a voice in my head say, turn around, and there's, there's a good looking woman behind me. Now keep in mind, I'm using this as an example here. Uh, but, you know, there, there's a good looking woman behind me. And I turn around and look. That's not of God. You know, that's lust. Which the Bible. The Word of God teaches us is a sin. Mm -hmm. Now, like I said, and I'm sure everybody goes through it, I go through temp my own temptations every day. But, we can make a choice not to give in to those temptations. And the more we choose not to give in to temptation, the closer to God we'll get. You feel that if you feel the devil tempting you, and you know the devil is tempting you, don't give in. That's right. Get on your knees and pray through it. That's right. Just like Jesus did in the garden. He got down on his knees. He said, "Lord, please let this child pass." And the devil was, you know. The devil tempted Jesus. Mm -hmm. So, 
Don't think that He won't tempt you. He tempted the most perfect person in the whole entire history of the world. But you know what? Jesus didn't give in, did He? Instead, He gave His life like He was meant, like His He was meant to do. He came into this world to set the world straight and to die for our sins. And the devil tempted him. So don't think he can't tempt you. That's right. That's all I've got right now. Amen. Praise the Lord. Look like you got that water getting heated up. Strict up verse here that come to me just a while ago. It's in Acts chapter 20, verse 24. It says, But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy, and that my ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. I thought about that, but none of these things move me. Brother Warren, a lot of Christians let things move them. They let things come in their way that cause us them to stray away. They'll let things come into their life that will cause them up. Glory to God, they'll let friends step into their life. And they'll let them come in and those friends will cause them to move this way. They'll cause them to move that way. But Brother Austin, you hold on to what God's give you. Don't let none of these things move you. Don't let none of them move you. Glory to God, because there's people out there in life's with people out there on the games that you play. Glory to God, they'll try their best to move you. They'll tempt you. They'll try you. Glory to God, they'll talk to you. And some of them can be little angels of light trying to cover up for you. Glory to God, they can be wolves in sheep's clothing. Glory to God, some of those that says they're atheists, they're just on there to see if you're going to argue with them. That's right. They're on there to see if you're going to say something to them. But God showed me this just a minute ago. But none of these things move me. Amen. In other words, he said, don't let these things move you. Right. You hold fast to what God is giving you. Right. Glory to God, because the devil will try his best to move you. He will try his best, Brother Gavin, to move you out of the way. If he thinks he can get you to fall one way or the other, he's going to try his best to move you. But if you hold fast to the Word of God, none of these things can move you. Nothing that Satan tries to throw at you, he cannot move you. He cannot cause you to fall, cannot cause you to waver. Glory to God if you'll put your faith and trust in God. How do you say, preacher, what are you doing, pastor? Well, I'm trying to teach you something. Yes, Lord to God, I've seen people on the internet. Yes, they'll get on there and they'll talk about the Bible, Brother Warren. Yes. And just a few minutes later, they want to argue about the Bible. Amen. And they want to argue the Word of God, Brother Daniel. Yes, and they'll try to get you to get into that conversation with them. And when they get you into that conversation, they want to try their best. If they know that you ain't really been on the battlefield for a long time, they're going to try to chew you up and they're going to try to spit you out. But you put somebody in there that's been on the battlefield for a while and they know that word of God, they can't move them. They can't shake them. They'll try their best. Lord God, I told somebody one time they wanted to argue the word of God. I said, I don't argue the word of God. I don't argue the word of God. I don't tell nobody. Hallelujah. I tell everybody 
The Word of God is the Word of God. It'll stand when this world's on fire. That's right, man. The Bible said the truth shall make you free. It will set us free. The truth. It said, but none of these things move me. Neither count my life dear to myself. So that I might finish my course yes. with joy. joy. Amen. In the ministry, y'all young, y'all just starting out preaching. Josh, just starting out preaching. You're young. Y'all pays in the ministry. And if us older ones can't teach you and to warn you that there is people out there that will try their best to persuade you. They will try their best to say, you can't preach. You can't preach. They'll try to confuse your mind. They'll try to tell you you can't do this and you can't do that. But can I tell you what you need to do? You need to get on your knees and you need to talk to God every day of your day that you live. You need to talk to God every day. Glory to God. Forget about the video games. Forget about the computer, but get a hold of God and begin to read the Word of God. The more you read the Word of God, the more you study the Word, the more you'll be able to preach that Word. The more you'll be able to stand up here and you seek God and you face, you get a hold of God. When you get behind here, the anointing of God will get upon you. Uh, glory to God. How do you get that anointing? Uh, you don't get it by playing games. Uh, you don't get it by playing on the computer. Uh, you get it by praying. Uh, you get it by seeking the word of the Lord. Glory to God. You get it by reading the Bible. That's how you get it. That's how you get the anointing. And the Bible said the anointing will break the very yoke. And if you can't preach under the anointing, and you can't preach under the power of God, how are you going to break the yokes that's binding the sinners? How are you going to be able to teach them? The yoke destroys. Amen. Hallelujah. I said, God, why do you want me to tell them this? You're going into a new year. He said, y'all three are going into a new year. And I've heard all you want to get close to God. And you want to do what God wants you to do. Well, I'm the pastor and I'm going to tell you, you're going to have to study more. You're going to have to pray more. You're going to have to see God more. You're going to have to get into that Word. And every bit of that Word that you put into your body, every bit of that you eat, every time you read that Word of God, read it out loud. Read it out loud so you can hear the Bible said, be a hearer of the Word. Glory to God. If you will hear yourself reading that Word. It comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You'll understand that word. Amen. You'll understand that word. You say, Brother Miller, why are you jumping on us? I ain't jumping on you. I'm just telling you what the word of God says. Amen. Help Lord. Man, when you get in there and you get praying, <laughs> Brother Moore knows what I'm talking about. You get in there and you get praying. And you get lost in the anointing of God and under the power of the Holy Ghost. What comes? J-O-Y. That joy will come in. It will fill your soul. It will make you happy. Glory to God, you'll feel that Holy Ghost coming down. Glory to God, you can tell, you can look at the devil and say, devil, none of these things want to move me. You can try, you can howl, you can holler, you can put people in my way trying to confuse me, trying to tell me this and tell me that, but none of these things is going to move me. Glory to God, I'm going to count this my life. Glory to God, I'm going to count it as my life. Glory to God, dear unto myself so that I may finish my course with joy and that my ministry which I have received
the seed of the Lord Jesus Christ. You didn't get it because you wanted it. That's right. You testify the gospel. The gifts and the callings of God. God said that many are called, but few are chosen. I told Brother Gavin. I said, you got to sit under the preaching. you got to sit under some teaching. Glory to God. you got to sit under some men of God. you got to listen to the Word. you got to listen to people and let them teach you. Glory to God. you got a, a lot of preachers. Glory to God. A, a church is a lot of pastors. Brother Warren, when they, somebody says, I'm called to preach, they'll put them right behind the pool the next week. Glory to God and don't even let them study. Don't let them show their self approved. Glory to God. The Bible said study and show thyself approved. Glory to God. I told them, I told Gavin, I said, you know what? I said, when I got saved and glory to God and God called me to preach, glory to God, I sat under Bill Kiss Low for six years before I preached my first message. Glory to God, I studied and I showed myself approved. Glory to God, I, why did I wait six years? It wasn't because Brother Bill said to, he tried to get me to go ahead. But I said and I listened and I learned. Glory to God, and you say, well, brother. Are you telling me, I'm telling you what God said to tell you tonight. And now, behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching. The kingdom of God shall see my face no more. And wherefore I take unto you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. This was Paul talking. I'm telling you, Video games are all right. They're fun. They're fun. I used to play games on my phone all the time, Brother Warren. And the Lord spoke to me. You can be reading my word. You can be studying. And Brother Austin, I ain't got them games on my phone. I tried to play one the other night. It was a new one. I thought, well, I'll try this one. Got on there and started to play it. I said, I can't do it. I went in there and I deleted it out of my phone. I said, I can't do it. So I turned my Bible app on my phone, put my earphones in my ears, and I listened to the Word of God as it was being read to me. And I listened to the Word. And I listened. And I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for Bible apps. The King James. I said, I want King James. I don't want this other stuff. I don't want this because it's not the right thing. When they take the blood out of it, Glory to God, when they start taking words out, the Bible says that you'll be in danger of hellfire if you add or take away from this Word of God. Glory to God, and there's a lot of people that's going to be in hellfire because they have had it and they took away from the Word of God. Hallelujah. We're fixing to go into our foot washing and our communion.